Hello everyone, welcome to another Computercraft Lua lesson. Today we'll be going over a new data type called a table. Fundamentally, tables are pretty simple, but there are many, many ways to use them. So sit back because this will probably be a long lesson. You'll probably find that tables are the most useful data type in all of Lua. Essentially, they are an item that can hold multiple values. Another way you can think about it is a list of different values in one container. First, let's create a table. To create a table, you first open it with opening curly bracket, then you put whatever values you want after, separating each value with a comma, and then you close the table with a closing curly bracket. These values can be numbers, strings, or any other data type. You can even mix and match data types, and every single type of data in Lua can be stored in, the, in a table, including another table. Now that you know what a table can do, what can you do with it? If you try to print a table, it will show you this code. To give a brief explanation, this is the address of the location in memory that the table is stored. I won't go into full detail about this because it's not important right now. What you need to know right now is how to access the values within the table. Each value in a table is called an element, and to access an element, you need to call its index within the table. You do so by typing the variable name, followed by square brackets. Inside the brackets goes a number and that number will index one of the elements in the table. The number of the element you access is dependent on what order they're added to the table. This number is element 1, the string is element 2, and the boolean is element 3. So to print the string from the table, we need to put the number 2 in the square brackets. To make the table more readable, you can also write the table like this. It works exactly the same as not including the numbers, but with this you have more control over the information. For example, if you do this, you can control the order of each element in the table. So we can make the number element 2, the string element 1, and there's nothing saying that we have to go perfectly in any order, so we can call the boolean element 4 completely skipping element 3. And actually, we can even set the index to be 0, or even a negative number. At this point, there are still 3 elements in the table, but the indexes are negative 1, 2, and 4. The elements 0, 1, and 3 don't exist, so they would return nil if you tried to call them. There is another way to store information inside a table. Other than indexes, you can also use keys. Keys are like indexes, but they're more like creating variables within a table. Alternatively, you can use the brackets, but use a string instead of a number as the index. This method is good if you want to create a key with spaces in it like so. There are two ways to call a key within a table. You can use the brackets and string method like you would for calling an index, or as long as the key doesn't have any spaces in it, you can call the table name, followed by a dot, followed by the key name. Both methods will call the same value as long as the spelling is correct. Next, I'm going to teach you your first library. Up until now, I've shown you global functions like print and write. These are functions that exist globally within the Lua environment. A library is a collection of functions that exist within a certain namespace, and the functions inside these libraries are called methods. Computercraft calls them APIs, but they're not really APIs, they're libraries. I'll go into more detail about what exactly functions are in the future. For now, you just need to know how to use these two functions that are available within the table library. The table library consists of methods that allow you to manipulate tables. The first function I want to show you is table.insert. This function allows you to insert an element into a table at a specified index. To use these functions, you need to pass arguments into them. It's just like passing arguments into some of the pre-installed programs I've shown you before, but the syntax is slightly different. With functions, you pass arguments within the parentheses. The print and write functions take one argument, and that's the string you want to be displayed on the screen. This function takes three required arguments, each one separated by a comma. The first argument is the table you want to change. The second argument is the number index where you want the new element to be inserted. And the third argument is the value of the element. In this case, I'll add the number three. Now your table has keys and an index. The insert function will allow you to add any element at any part of the table, whether it's at the start, at the end, or in between two elements. Keep in mind, if you insert an element to the middle or start of a table, it will move all elements over by one index. So if you put something at index 3 where something already exists, then the old 3 would become 4, 4 would become 5, and so on. It will not do this, however, if you have a gap between elements, like element 2 being nil between elements 1 and 3. You can also create an empty table by writing the curly brackets with nothing inside, and then use the insert function to add stuff to it. The only thing the insert method will not allow you to add is a key. If you want to create a new key, you have to call the key you want to add, 
and define it as you would a, key, a variable. You can also define and redefine other keys and indexes this way. If you want to remove an element from a table, you can use table.remove. This function has two required arguments. The first is the table you want to change, and the second is the index of the element you want to remove. If there is an element at one index after the one you just removed, that element will be moved backward to take its place. And every element after that will also be moved back. However, if there is a gap between elements like 4 skips to 6, and you remove 2, 3 will become 2, 4 will become 3, but without 5, 6 will stay exactly where it is. Just like the insert function, this function also will not work with keys. If you want to remove a key, you have to redefine that key to nil. You can also set an indexed element to nil, but this way, it won't move all of the elements backwards. The next thing to talk about is a multi-dimensional table. This is a table that has tables as elements. I'm actually going to move to the program editor to demonstrate because it will be easier to read. First, let's create a table. This is a one-dimensional table because it only has one line of elements. If we define the first element to be another table, this can be called a subtable, and this is the second dimension of elements we can define. Then, in this subtable, let's create a key and define it with yet another table. Now let's make the first element of that table an arbitrary number. This is a three-dimensional table. It's three-dimensional because it has three sets of information within it, each table being its own set. Typically you wouldn't define a multi-dimensional table with a key, but the point to get across is how you can define multiple sets of information using tables within tables. As you already know, you can call an element in a table by calling its index or key. To access the element in a subtable, you put a second set of square brackets with the index. If it's a key with no spaces, you can use the dot method instead. And finally, you can access the first element of the third table with another set of brackets. Doing this will return the number 46, which is the value of the element we defined in this 3D table. The insert and remove functions will work with this 3D table as well. You just need to call the table or subtable you want to change in the function. You just need to write it like this if you want to add an element to the third dimension. Remove the key if you want to add an element to the second dimension, and remove the first index if you want to add it, the element to the first dimension. Remember, you can add an element of absolutely any data type, so you can even add another table using this method. Using the remove method on the first dimension will permanently remove the subtable and all of the data that was inside of it, so keep that in mind when removing subtables. And that's it for now. Thank you all for watching this lesson of the Computer Craft tutorial. This one was pretty long-winded at times, so I hope I was able to help you understand tables. If you have any questions about this lesson, as always, you may ask in the comments section. Thank you again for stopping by, and I hope to see you again next week.